Hi, my name's Ed Nolan and I'm an A-level psychology teacher and in today's video we're going to introduce you to the ideas of validity and reliability in psychological research. Now here's just a thought exercise. Let's say that coronavirus is taking root again and the government is seriously considering whether we should go into yet another lockdown. So they, let's say we have a considerate government this time, and so they are going to look at the impact that it has on young people and take that into consideration as to whether we go into a full lockdown or not. Now, the evidence seems to suggest on one side that a lockdown has a negative consequence to young people, that the feeling of isolation was significant there, that it led to low moods, mental health issues, and all of those things associated um, with not doing very well. But let's say that also there was some evidence to show that lockdown had a positive effect, but actually more family time um, and more space and time to think um, gave young people more security. And so actually lockdown was seen as a positive thing. So the government don't quite know whether going into a lockdown would be detrimental to young people or would be a positive thing to young people. So what they do is they engage, a, so this is whether we go into lockdown or not, they engage a group of psychologists. There they are, down those are real psychologists. You can tell by the amount of um, glasses and facial hair and, and blue hair. Anyway, so these psychologists have come together. The government has said, look, your data that you produce from your research will inform us whether we go into a lockdown or not. So it's really quite important that you get this right. So they pull together a, some ideas on a piece of research. And what their idea is, is to interview 200 teenagers across the country. And what they're going to do is give them 50 questions with a rating scale, a five point rating scale with the idea that they can get a score, a quantitative score at the end, an average rating across those questions, which says um, how happy people were in lockdown or not. They're also going to back that up with 10 open ended questions to get some qualitative data. And they're going to carry this out in four different parts of the country, um, Scotland, Wales, Northern England and Southern England. And they're going to go in twos and they're going to interview these young people. So here we've got a piece of research. They think, yes, we will collect the data that we need to inform the government as to whether they should go into lockdown or not. However, this is a really important matter and there's some issues that could come up with this research, such as there are more than one researcher. So would they be doing it in different ways? Would that mean that the data they collect be trustworthy? Would it be consistent? Would the um, participants change their answers for demand characteristics to help the researcher out? Would they be non, would they be um, answers that were not truthful um, in their there wouldn't be legitimate answers. Could they answer in one way at one time because they're having a great day, but actually their thoughts about how happy they were in lockdown at another time would be very different. There would be inconsistencies there. Could their answers be changed because of something to do with the research? Because I don't know, he's a great big hairy guy asking questions. So they wouldn't tell them the truth. They wouldn't give them the true answers. Uh, it's called researcher effects. Could it be that the um, participants that they're using, they're all extroverts and so they have a very negative experience with lockdown, whereas an introvert would feel quite comforted by it and found it a very positive experience. They didn't reflect, these extroverts didn't reflect all of the introverts' ideas. Maybe the questions, these 50 questions, they vary differently on how they use the rating scale. So what we won't have is a trustworthy score um, because they're not consistently measuring in the same way. Maybe um, people will change their answers. The teenagers change answers to look good, make themselves look more positive, And that's called social desirability. Um, maybe it doesn't reflect what they would say in real life. Now and again, we say we will do stuff or be a certain way when actually when it comes really down to it, we're not. And so this might happen but they might say yes it was a not a bad experience but in the reality of it when they're in real lockdown maybe that was quite different so their answers don't legitimately um, represent what happens in real life 
Maybe the questions just weren't about lockdown or they weren't about teenagers' experiences. So these are a number of issues that are really important in psychological research that if we don't quite get them right, the research isn't trustworthy or isn't legitimate. Um, and so the government can't really use it to make their decisions. This idea of trustworthiness or consistency is related to reliability. If something is reliable, it means that it consistently produces or is consistently done in the same way, produces the same results. The other concept is validity. And validity is this idea of legitimacy or truth. Is the study legitimately or truthfully measuring what it claims to measure? Or is it not? Is it measuring something else? Are participants not being truthful or the questions not really asking uh, about the thing that they want them to ask about? Okay. This is sometimes um, related to as the difference between reliability and validity to a target. Let's say our study, um, the aim of our study or the target of our study is to measure young people's experience of lockdown. That is in the target. And what we find is, is that actually our participants are consistently telling us something. But the questions actually weren't about their experience of lockdown. It's about just generally about their experiences. Um, and so what we find is, is we're not getting what we want, but we're consistently getting it. It is reliable, but not valid. Then we've got a situation where sometimes the research is asking questions about what it should be, um, young people's experience of lockdown, and sometimes it's not. And the participants' answers are very varied. Um, they're not consistent. So what we find then is that we have um, an issue of um, some validity, but very low, and maybe a little bit of reliability, but very low. So it's low reliability, low validity. Then we have a situation where none of the questions or the study is about young people's experience of lockdown and none of the participants or none of the, the, the conditions within the study are staying consistent. And so that's low reliability and validity. But the thing we want, the holy grail, is that you are actually measuring what you want to measure, young people's experiences, and that actually we're consistently getting similar findings, we're getting trustworthy findings. So what we can see here is that you can have a study that is reliable but not valid. You can't have a study that is valid but not reliable. Um, and that actually reliability is just about consistency. Validity is about um, validity is about legitimacy. Okay. And that we try and have both of those. So let's go back to my um, situation with COVID. If we look at reliability, these are the issues of reliability here. This idea that actually somebody would not would give a different answer at a different time. They're a legitimate answer, but different different answers at different times. And that is an issue of consistency. Yeah, you're not measuring. It's not trustworthy measuring it once. You need to measure it a number of times to make sure it's trustworthy. This idea that different part different researchers are there, and that you need to keep everything the same. The same means consistent. Consistent means the same. And so therefore, if you keep things the same, it becomes reliable. Like the questions, if they're consistently using the rating scale in the same way, you know it's reliable and trustworthy. Our other ones, the ones to do with social desirability, demand characteristics, research effects, all about participants not giving truthful answers. That is an issue of validity. As well as if the questions really were asking what you wanted them to ask about young people's experience within a lockdown. If they weren't asking about those, they're not valid questions. They're not legitimate or truthful questions. Likewise, we need to make sure that we can truly relate what we are finding to real life and other participants. Real life, by the way, is called ecological validity. And by other participants, it's participant, uh, pop, sorry, population validity, almost got me there. Um, now, you might be looking at the colours and say, wow, that's great, but why the green, why the blue? Well, of course, blue is related to reliability, red validity, but the green is something about internal. This is about if it's within the context of the study itself, it has internal reliability or validity i.e. if the researchers in your study are doing it the same way, then it's internal reliability. 
if the researchers in if the participants in your study are giving legitimate answers it has internal validity it's about inside the study but some of them relate to outside and that's called external external reliability would the person still answer in the same way at different times when they're not in your study that is is it trustworthy that's external reliability likewise the participants you use do they represent other teenagers outside in the in the kind of across the nation okay are they valid to others is their population validity likewise to real life if what you're doing in your an interview is a very staged artificial event it's not real life and but the people are talking about real life so is what going on in there does that represent what would actually really happen in real life okay so what have we learned today today we have learned that in order for a study to be trustworthy it needs to be consistent consistent findings consistent procedures this consistency is called reliability in order for a researcher to legit the researcher needs to legitimately measure what they claim to be measuring not kind of false or untrue answers anything like all things that don't relate and that is called validity validity relates to the legitimacy of a study now sometimes reliability and validity the issues are internal to do within the study and sometimes they are to do with external what happens outside of the study and all of these are really important so well done on getting through a video on reliability and validity now when i was a student i found it tough and i didn't get it straight away and some of the things i had to go back and have a look at again so if you're feeling that you're not quite there that some of the things weren't quite sure that's fine just keep going you will get there just maybe have another look at the video or have some reading or have a chat to one of your teachers i hope this video has been of some use if it has please do the thumbs up um, for me um, and uh, i hope you enjoy the rest of your day